tried something that you want to share with us so that I can start based on from that instead of um, you know from the scratch so who has collected I, I know that you know there has been a discussion who has collected a few names that they start with and kind of enriched it so who has collected who has reached 100 uh, user list or more just if you as a chat just one i will mention your name okay uh, okay i obeyed uh, abila yes so um i've had a thousand um users already but Wonderful. i don't know whether the approach i use is acceptable okay just tell us exactly that's what i want so what i did okay so what i did was to just manually um get the names of some meaningful goal let me say top Ghanaians i have considered like the president the vice president some popular musicians businessmen so i made their names and then i just searched their names on twitter and then i okay. grabbed their their user handles so from from there i realized that their friends that's the people they follow are very few as compared to the number of people following them so it suggests that um the people they follow that's intention so they choose to follow like some people but not everyone so i just grab their friends that's the people they follow and then limited to the people who have their um account location be set, set set my country so essentially that's what i did and then i used um a set to contain all of these things so that there are no repetitions um in them so with that one i was able to get 1000 um, users great I, I think i missed just the last piece so you collected which is really great that's what i i will do um so we are doing the same thing I will collect exactly from the ministers, the uh, like the prime minister, and some of the names that I know. And then, so how many did you collect manually? So manually, I think um, 19 by 2. So that's like... Um, uh, yeah, 19, uh, yeah, 19 19 users, okay. Um, users I collect them manually. Huh? 38 in all so i grouped them into two i grouped them into two so there were 19 in each group so 38 yeah in all. great and then from there you you get their the users they follow they are, or what, they are what? friends their friends yes okay yeah because there are three things right there yes, are so I, yes so i did that yeah so i did great. that and i limited it to um their, the people they follow who are from this country no, fantastic. I think that's that's exactly what I, I recommended, and that's just what I will expect, you know. I think that's probably also what is in all of those sophisticated papers you saw, that's what they do. I mean, in one way or another. And some of them, they they basically have a list already um, in a conference paper, you know, in a conference, for example, for the machine learning groups, and they do that. But that's exactly what, and for us in particular, what we want is from our own country instead of just you know you could do another strategy i saw some texts so let me see um, um i think i think that's true but at the same time uh exactly there is an actual a number of voices outside the country so definitely it's probably you know, like one has to think but in the beginning i think it's actually um it would be a good filter or you have to apply another type of filter which is just based on the tweet um you kind of like understand how many times they talk for example many of you in your analysis you have realized the country names actually trend a lot most of the tweets kind of have like ghana or uh, ethiopia or kenya so you could then just say like okay how many of them actually tweet at least with that hashtag and we ha i think some of you also in your report you, you have noticed that no, some of these influential people this particular governments they don't use i think in one report one person even in 300 tweets the nigerian president didn't 
didn't have had only one tweet you know so it's kind of sometimes it's, it gets hard you have to do some, probably more textual analysis to know if the person is actually if it's not their location inside i mean in, within the country are they talking are they the kind of people you want so that's kind of really where research you know, sometimes the real getting the thing becomes easy and just identifying a particular thing becomes the complicated part that's that's always the case it's just it's not like the that the difficulty or the difficulty level of the task doesn't depend on what you think is um you know big or small sometimes a very tiny small detail will take you a year and but while just doing setting up the whole the general thing probably is an hour you know and and that's that's the thing but i think yeah like you have to experiment what works uh, depending on also the country will change um so for example if there is a penetration the internet penetration high so that's one thing i would i would like you to also consider is like depending on your country you, you can correlate the um, just how much uh, tweets are there by the governments and by other um, <laughs> people compared to like the internet penetration especially if you could search it through time so but that's just an ad, you know like just an answer dot um, so okay so we have 1000 at least for ghana that's really a great start and is there anyone else from nigeria kenya uh, ethiopia i mean probably the ethiopian group just joined i think but it's good still that you are here and you are listening this if you are here i think i saw at least Caleb joined now uh, before there was also Nahum, but so let's um, anyone else who has got a Twitter account from their country of more than hundred. John, hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Ken. Um, I managed to get the list, but it was it was a bit time consuming because of the of the rate limit. So you have to wait like fifteen minutes so that you can get another list of another person so like the way my my usernames are structured it was in such a way that most of the people I actually just got the top 10 ones because of the time limit because mm -hmm. getting the 10 one like took like two hours or something just to get a list of but overall i have a list of like 2200 usernames but i think it's a bit biased because most of the of the most of the people before before i stopped running the code most of the usernames had gotten off from political people mm -hmm. so i'm thinking probably my list is a bit biased to political people because they follow other political people yes that's that's a I, thanks for mentioning that that was one of the thing i was about to say that was one of our strategy again uh the ayabeli villa uh, and me, what when I was doing that, what you really realize is exactly that you kind of get tended to, if you start from prime minister and ministers, you start kind of getting biased. Just the initial condition biases you, the kind of where you end up, because these people are politicians. Usually they are interested in politics as well, mostly, uh, or anyone who talks politics. So you probably seeding, so that's called seeding, when you start from uh, a more, inclusive sample so just like i think you uh, uh, bila you said also that you started from the musician celebrities that's good i think probably you should just check how many of um the kind of descriptions they put are in in kind of in this so social um like kind of culture which includes art whatever thing plus economics plus um, politics so just just yeah that's an important point to to invert, you know, to kind of um, to pay attention. Okay, so we have so we have a number of them. So now, like the like, let me project one of. Uh, so just for the Ethiopian group who probably um, don't know the context. So just like what you did, like for the Twitter search, what then this this last week's project for the general one was, you know, just to try to get to identify. Uh, users that are influentials and politicians that are and, and kind of uh, search for their hashtag and for some of the you know the hot topics uh, they are talking and kind of how much how, how influential they are measuring that 
And these weeks, we, we are going above and kind of for each of the countries, uh, the group is trying to do to identify communities. So the communities that are talking on a certain topic and kind of measuring again, kind of uh, whether they, there is where is there something like, for example, the economics group, for example, is, you know, what is the whole topic in that one and, and the politics one. So it's kind of trying to understand the communities and how they talk and how they structure uh, in each of the countries in Twitter. So it's kind of just it gives you the context. So I will start from, so the, this tutorial is on uh, using the Google uh, API to actually, once you have listed, you know, how do you interact with the Google uh, sheet through the API it's from um, like Python. Just before that though, I am gonna, a window. Okay. Um, I think let me bring this. Okay. So let's see paper this one. Okay. So here is one of the paper that which includes also um, a package, a Python code that does you know, you know, it's kind of whatever they do in the paper, which is really good. And it is from 2017, I mean, published in 2018. And it has, it's basically one of the paper that I feel like you can do it in a laptop, which is great. And it has a high capacity for future as well, kind of like if you want to extend the analysis, for example, after downloading a week full of data, if you have a hard disk, and if you are saving your data, and let's say you have a gigabytes of many gigabytes of data uh, you stored it and you kind of want to analyze you want to you know this will give you and the complexity is small so you know like what i will do i usually of course how do i select this paper the good thing it's a real-time community detection so if i am streaming i can kind of like if i'm building these things basically can decompose communities or tell me communities over real time so which is one of the really good thing unlike just offline one, which is at one time. Um, oh, so. Okay, so we had, we had, so, uh, Arun, are you here? I think in another room. Just, I don't know if I should wait or, or not. I hope I want him to do something. Sorry? You want him to do something? Yeah, maybe just Alayas with Arun, just in case if I should wait or, um, or just I should continue. Okay, all right. Let me just write me him. So I will just continue, but I will, uh, yeah, you write him and then if I should wait or not. Okay, all right, sure. Great. So, so how I read it, just I basically usually just read the, the abstract because I want to know if it really what is um, um, what I want, right? So in this case, okay, um, it works for Facebook and Twitter. That's great. That's a bonus, but it's not the most important element. Um, and single machine was the most important element for me that I don't want to, you know, there are, I know there are a lot of packages that that can do for like terabytes, um, but sometimes they have complexity that I don't want. So, but this is just, I want it single machine um, stuff, great. And then uh, the key idea, just I will start from there, and is that uh, it's like the aggregated action of large numbers of users can be compressed into data structure. Uh, and it's a graph uh, using Hello, yeah. graph. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, he's not sure what you should wait for. Sorry? He's not sure what you should, he, he, he was asking what um, you should wait for. Oh, no, I meant more because he said in another room there were other students waiting. Oh, okay, okay. So so you okay. want to... No, no, but it's okay. I think now people are coming, so it's, it's fine. Um, okay. it's just tell him that I was just more like, because I saw a text from him saying that mm. there are 10 students waiting in another room. Um, oh, okay, 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 all right, all right, sure. 
Okay. So, so there is one thing here, for example, even for me, I'm not that expert in graphs. So usually it could put me off if I don't know it. So Loal, anyone, you can just type your questions, you know, like if this thing is like, if, if you need me to go a little bit deeper on certain things. But so what I am just like, okay, graphs, you know, I am that not that expert in graphs, but if they are encapsulating it in a certain way that I understand, it's great. But it's just, I know what a graph is. You know, there is a node, I mean, TensorFlow, whatever is a graph. Many things are a graph. There is, um, you know, and then Twitter accounts themselves are a graph. And uh, so uh, um, an age, I mean, a node, and then an age is basically just, uh, you know, if you follow, you can define. If you, if you kind of like someone, that could be just part of the age. But if you are just interested in, in a follow, uh, follow sheep, uh, so following sheep uh, relationship, then in that case, it would be just if someone follows, so the ages become follow, friends graph. So you can make another graph that would be like basically, okay, if someone is friend with someone else. So conceptually, it's okay, I understand, and I will go. And then communities, blah, blah. And then it, then I think the other part is just at the time it takes um, to do. Great. And then I will just skim through. So I will just read some of the things. Usually, I'll, that's why always good papers. Like every time I see something, I'm just looking for the first plot. And that's the trick. Everyone, most people don't run, read your text. It's good to read your text, but your first graph should encapsulate with a good caption everything. And in this case, it's exactly that. Okay, so somebody and somebody and find similar accounts. So this is exactly what we are doing now, the first step. Okay, so you collected a few to start with, the sample, um, and then you, you just find similar accounts. Similar accounts, you find them through exactly by taking the list, um, a, a list of friends or a list of followers or uh, a list of like likes that other people like on that person, right? Or that means the people who have seen that person's tweet. And then structure and visualize exactly that we, have, we know how to do that. And then basically do some kind of decomposition, community decomposition. In that community decomposition, I still, you know, in science, usually when we say community, it's it's a, a spe it's a technical term. It, I know that from experience, there's nothing you can do with a English word um, in science. You have to define what you mean. So that's exactly what is really always when I say community. When you say you know graph, everything has to be it has a technical definition. If you don't understand, I usually just go and check it. Okay, so so for this case. You know, if you look, there is an example, great. So I could read it, but I, I think I'm, so this is where I like a lot more because background and usually the first definitions would give me. So a social media network is a structure that comprises a graph and a collection of metadata describing the vertices and ages, which is, and a community has no formal mathematical definition, but is generally agreed to be a collection of vertices that share many more ages than would be expected from the random subset of vertices. So this basically tells you the whole entire, um, so I'm just gonna copy it actually here. So this is basically the kind of the important thing if you haven't understood it, what you are supposed to do, what you know, when you define a community, what you, what you are really saying is that, okay, if there are some, if I generate a random distribution of, you know, points, then if I and then randomly generate links between them, then that's called my baseline. So that's like no community baseline, you know, just. And now, if I have now another data that I download, and then I look at excess over that's what is expected from the random, I can define that a community. So, and then of course, the, what, what kind of community? The label. So first you define the very, very basic thing called community. And then you should give it a name for that community. And that name can depend on like how many, you know, like taking the number of the top five hashtags, exactly it could be. And then saying if that hashtag is a community regarding Let's say in, in the Ethiopia, for example, currently there are certain um, situations going on. 
it could be one thing it could be you know i i am um, and it's my dam so in that case i know this is an activist community or more about like a generic like basically activists um, on a certain topic or it could be the dominant term could be covid-19 in that community in that case i know this is again more of like health related um or people who got worried and it could be another thing another topic so that's one but that's you know you know that there are many many others you, you can now go refine either through a hashtag by taking the the many number of likes or the ones highly retweeted so you have a number of cases or by combination exactly what you uh, defined in your earlier thing using you know the number of tweet retweets the number of likes number of um like i think you don't get the comment but as well as number of hashtags like top hashtags within that community or you can just another way very good way probably is that you 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 take all the description of the users in that community and you you search for a word that is common so are if they are politicians they would be like ex ministers or blah blah you know something so if they are musicians usually it would be like music or something so you can search for a specific word so that's called you know you, you will do some kind of um word decomposition and do histogram on the word and find the high frequency word and kind of or and then kind of do something like like that for the number of one and then the community label the name of the community can be that okay so that's but this is exactly what is the, the whole you know the whole project kind of is that you know understanding particularly what do you mean when you say community you know um, and of course there is an element that you will you can understand which is like okay there is purity just like anything else how really cluster this community is yeah specific word yeah exactly um so okay and a decomposition means like you know their description for example in each of these users there is a description about what they do or you know whatever and you can break them into spaces these words or like word decompose using nltk for example and then you can basically do um, it's called term frequency so uh, there is term frequency and document frequency just um, uh, tfidf kind of analysis that basically that just let's look at the term frequency and you want to identify like what is the top term that is used you know usually of course it's the in whatever that's called stop words you have to extract them out but then what is left from that what is the common kind of description because this is self described so it's actually a better one um and then how many of the, the users like a certain you know like the most for each of the users you can get like what are the ones that they they like their tweets that are liked most and then you can analyze so these are all just options until you find you know, a good label you know um, it, or you can print them you can summarize them and then manually just pick up like okay this sounds like this type of community you know you can actually also do sometimes like a manual work like that of course if you automate it that's great then it will scale up but sometimes what you want in insight do whatever you can to get that insight okay so that's what i would do it's like i will just go and then you can measure how pure is your community you know because sometimes like for anything to the first analysis usually just gives something but really what is important is identifying if really your community is real community or kind of a subset of communities you know um and that is what you measure the kind of tightness of the community you know how really are tight how many descriptions blah blah so that's the I think we will, that would be the, the kind of topic for another time but you can measure how the quality of the, the community that means if you define this is an economy you know people who talk more or focus more on economy then you can you can just define the kind of the you know how much of the tweets the fraction of the tweets that actually talks about economy divided by the number of total tweets can can be a proxy for example as a as a purity okay so that is that is one i would say and then here most of these things just are described in the context of this tweet graph you know a community might be the set of twitter accounts blah blah that's again and um so i think there are a couple of things i don't understand here as well like 
clearly. I mean, it's not like my, the bread and butter for me. Some of them, I just have to search them. So for example, neighboring graph, just I, I have to just search what it is just immediately to know. Um, and then and then I will just look um, that blah, blah. And then uh, there are, they compare, so which is also a great resource. So if, if you don't like their method, you should actually go into one of these, which probably are easier. Um, so that, that's usually a kind of data. This gives you a data. Now, instead of doing your own literature review, they basically they, they gave you other methods that, that kind of, um, you know, that kind of are published in the past, which does what you want, you know? So, uh, so their method is satisfies the other and the other method just, you know, like uh, large graphs or real time or SCM is um, something that's defined there, as you will, you'll find it, okay? Okay, and then I, I still, want to understand the, I mean I already understood what is the um, the point but I want to go to what kind of data they use okay just is it similar data to me the kind of data I'm getting and yeah that's basically you know they they collected some but exactly like us just you know the, if you look at it in this article we focus on Twitter data whatever at the same time okay so 13 billion, whatever, already at the writing, at the time that they write, there were 100, 1 billion users and 30, 30 billion ages. So this 30 billion ages means that in average, one user has 30 follows, for, for, or 30 followers. Um, so that's basically it. And to collect this data, what they did is every time a new account is crawled, we check the number of followers in the account metadata. And if it's greater than 10,000, we download the full the full followers list okay so what they did just like what we did what what do we do we do basically go to the our intention is not to find you know arbitrary top users we want people who really actually we care so we go to the ministers to the celebrities because we think they represent something for them that going to that celebrity and ministers kind of is encapsulated by this number. So they wanted someone with more than 10,000 followers. And they give the reason why, because this is just, they want to do a large analysis and they want to measure the, the performance. And how do, you, how do they measure the performance? If someone has more than 10,000 followers, usually they, from other research, they have, they have seen or they found that, that they have a public profile somewhere in Wikipedia or somewhere, which is great. You know, so that means they can go and check if the user actually is a minister or, you know, if they really actually belong to that one. So that's one thing you would do for yourself also. Maybe just you could check that one, and, you know, the user, if the user has um, a, a Wikipedia entry or something, you could just even get the kind of in which profession they are. To, even Wikipedia has also an API code. But that's just the next level. For now, we want to just, um, so, and they found these numbers great and you know you can read a lot of these these things and and this is the method um i think this is where you, you call it a mathematics so this is just a jacardi similarity i mean basically um like if a are just the communities um you we are talking about and the number of communities this is just the intersection and the other one is the union right um into the communities and this is this compares between two uh, so this gives you this quantifies the similarity between um, two clusters or two two accounts so i mean if you don't know i will just go in wikipedia or something and i will just say this is the the main thing they use just jacardi jacquard similarity okay and that's what I will do. I will just go and really check what is Jacquard similarity. But that's, um, and here probably are some mathematics. And it's really, you know, if, if I am just, um, um, so some of them, it, these are all implemented. So if you want to implement all this up to now, so far, is just really a set. That means just like a list in Python. Um, and this is basically, if if something exists it's one or if something doesn't exist it's zero you know if they are similar and and, and the, so this and this are some value so delta function if you don't know again like 
this is something not required because at the moment they give you they provided uh, the code so you can run but it's important of course to go just through sometimes what they did and you know but i would i would say like the so this is what variance in this case is what they use as kind of the tightness of the group um they they but the rest is a code just algorithm um yeah and i think hopefully that you can just follow this code i mean without the mathematics already just by looking at the graphs and the algorithms what they are doing um and and just run so um So hopefully you get some idea like the, the flow. Um, and so the seed account I was talking about is just what we really start. And then you get the, um, from that seed account there, um, they use the, the, the followers of those people. And then you get again, just, you know, you iterate and then you basically, you, you select best 10 and Okay, what is it? Where can we find it? I already shared, but it's in this paper. It's just listed here in the first page. I think they shared. I think it's the first page uh, or reference, maybe. Yeah. Um, okay, maybe it's in the reference. The acknowledgement. I shared already the the paper and the code in the channel in one of the channel. I it was obvious to to find it from the just the actual paper. Okay, so I will reshare it again, but. Um, Usually it's in the acknowledgement or somewhere just there that they would find, but here it seems not. Okay, so, but I will share the, the code. So they, they shared already the code um, somewhere. So, or maybe if I just go, if I do this, Yeah, I will share, I will share the, I will reshare that. Um, okay. Great, okay, so that's what, what we are doing is really exactly that. And the only way that the only place where we will use their, um, once we collect the database or, or basically just a list, we can basically go to the code, uh, where is the code? So this is, um, you know, Exactly now, just if we say for each of the, so this is the kind of community they detected, right? And this is the size in that community they found and the clustering, so that, that's the cohesiveness is what I was thinking, the, the tightness, that's all the mathematics derived above are basically the kind of estimating this, you know? Um, is it probably here? Yeah, uh, no. Yeah, but, um, so this is what, and then the, the density, it's in a graph that you can compute, but you don't need all that for now. But the only thing you need is just the size and the community, right? Because that's what you really want. And then to give to give it a label, uh, just like what they did here. Uh, so so if, if you search on the, um, I don't know if they give a name, but it's, probably yeah, like the um, yeah so these are the users probably profile pictures um and and the community that's how they check because they could go to the wikipedia or also just some of the pictures just show so this is kind of a way to um and craft cider um so yeah it's like that's just telling you how good their method is so all this is basically just telling you you know how verifying that their methodology works um, and convincing you and yeah i think the the rest i think this is just too um, just detail um, yeah 
So, and this is just their speed in the computer, how they, how they managed, you know, to achieve uh, an ascertained period. Um, so which just has to support that it will fit in one computer. Um, and again, this recall and stuff like that, if, if you had already a training data that you could do that. Like for example, if you have a politician group, you, you hand collected. If you had um, a music group that you hadn't collected, let, let's say Ayabeli has, uh, and also Kane, I think, that you have some of them by hand collected, you, that's already labeled. You can label them because you know them. So you can use that one as a, as a basically to measure also the how much, how good it is your method. Okay, so there is one. Uh, yeah, I think that one is, is there a minimum number of handles for the politician? I think, I would say to apply the method, Janet, uh, it's, I don't think you need that much. I mean, you need, I don't think you need too many, but already from what you, um, if you had a seed number, which is by seed number, I'm talking about the numbers by you collected by hand. If you have about 20 and if they are famous enough, then you will, then by just getting the list of their followers, in the list of their friends, you would arrive probably you know more than a thousand. That's a good number to start with. So I think I would say for for yeah, like if you had if you have by hand collect just about twenty, and if those that the hand collected are the famous people in your country somehow or like important people either in culture or in society or um, in politics economics, then by just getting by pulling it their followers you will get more than a thousand and that's fine okay okay and could you um in a summary just say how we are going to approach the clustering after we have the data okay so great so the clustering is so the the very simple clustering you would do is define a dimension right so what does what is like so twitter when you get the user's account you you basically have the most of the for example their hashtags in the entities even in the user just data only without even the tweets they have hashtags or not i'm not sure so i have to um, so it's the definition is that hashtags a number of hashtags could be the, the dimension if you say the top five hashtags they select they 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 used so that means now you have a five dimensional space so or if you want to do it in a proper way so you will just collect the top um like i think i described it in the in the in the uh, so i'm just I, I described it so i'm just gonna read it actually from there so you, you will have to okay i think i'll just I can't seem to switch easily you will have to you will have to define where they belong in a certain dimension. Okay, I'm, I'm going to explain it clearly. So it is you, for each of the user that you will have, you will have to quantify how many times they tweeted about society, which basically you can define it to be society more politics. So like that means country or, um, um what, what will be the so something that that you will choose about a, 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 a topic that you know that is good like that, that kind of defines like some kind of like covid19 for example is like how many times they tweeted about covid19 so that would that could define about health okay so if, if it's a uh, health minister probably the health minister tweeted a lot about COVID-19 more than anyone, at least by the, you know, the normalized number. And you could just talk about economy, like GDP and uh, other things, or refugee, um, employment, so unemployment, things, economics. Um, so you define, so you will just say like, is in, you will use is, is in their tweet, um, these quantities and you count how many let's say you you collect 1000 tweets i would say it's even 100 is enough 
100 tweets for each of the users. And, and then you will just say how many of that the, their tweet contains this thing, COVID-19, which you can use it as a proxy for now for health. Uh, and then as music, for example, or an, any other hashtag that's known in your country to represent some culture and GDP unemployment to represent some kind of uh, economy. Uh, and then you will have four or five. So you just have to define what is relevant for you, just or as I defined it in the in the project uh, description. And then you that number of counts becomes the coordinate value in that axis. So in the axis of health, public health, how many times a user, you know, retweet tweets or retweets or whatever on COVID will just put them. Let's say if they tweeted out of their hundred tweets. 90, 90 times their tweet contains or their retweet contains that, then 90 over 100, you know, 0.9, their coordinate becomes 0.9 in that coordinates and that axis. And then in the, then if, because definitely these are overlapping, if the tweet unemployment, for example, 10 times, it would be 0.1. So they basically in this five dimensional space, one single user becomes a point, right? Just which contains just the five numbers, uh, which are the coordinates. Um, I think for now you do that, but all this is exactly what is, for now what I recommend is exactly just choose e the economic GDP unemployment as, uh, for example, uh, as economy, uh, COVID-19 as, um, so COVID-19 will be like everyone tweets it, but it's kind of like you could choose something else, like um, some kind of infectious disease, for example, or something that is common, health, but that's common. You, you can also pick those topics that you are defining the, hash, the you're defining the coordinate from the tweet themselves by using term frequencies, you know? But that's what I will do. Just define four or five dimensions, I mean, the dimensions that I gave you, um, and then, you will get the numbers, how many times, the, the normalized number, and then that will define a space. So that all of your users becomes in that space. Now clustering, k-means clustering, you will do it in that space. Is that clear? Um, uh, Billa or for others? So what I will do is probably that's slightly, uh, it needs demonstration uh, more than talking. I will start today, I will share with you uh, what I did just from the code, just to start the code on that, how I convert a tweet into a dimension. Just um, that would that would probably, for some of you probably who hasn't worked on that space, maybe it, it might help. Okay. Is, is there any other question? So we just pick one random hashtag on economic. You know, I would not call it, um, random hashtag of course for now you know for testing purpose you could uh, instead of random probably better if you if you actually choose something you know you know something that your country is going through malaria for example if you are in the malaria region right and um, if there is unemployment or some kind of crisis you can use it that that kind of uh, term the term that's common or election for example if if you are in an election period that just using election would be more quantifies the, um, um, some politics, you know? So use something that you know already. Uh, that's called domain knowledge. You always need to know what you are searching. Otherwise, just a computer will not figure out for you. So of course, you can automate that by improve that by searching and kind of doing term frequency, document frequency analysis uh, to find out what is common, you know, what do people talk about, and what are the top things that, that are, you know, whatever, like hashtags, for example, are key. That's where I, us I usually just ask you to do hashtags or find hashtags. But um, yeah, use, use a subset to define what, what represents health, what represents politics, or uh, what represents art and culture, what represents economics. Okay, so, um, I think it's all, all of, you know, really over time, but uh, I'm just gonna. Okay. 
So, um, I think I will just three. Okay. So I will stop this one, and I will share. How many people managed to create? Um, I'm just gonna share. Sorry, Jupiter. So to manage their Google service account, right? So last time, in a, if you don't know how what I'm talking about, Google uh, service account, it's basically that you would have to go to um, your Google Gmail if you have, and then you, it's a developer uh, thing. I, I mean, it's just like Twitter, but in, unlike Twitter, you don't have to request. If you have Gmail, you just get it, right? So you will go through the process of um, generating. Uh, so th there is a video that a tutorial I gave, just generating just um, a, an account. It's called service account, which is basically an API access for your Gmail. It will give you an API access to your Google Drive, to Google Sheets, and everything that you know that Google offers. So we are starting from that. I assume that you created a service account, and if you don't, if you didn't create the service account, then you should just create the service account. That's uh, and just follow the video. Um, and so from that, what we had was. So I think the easiest probably is um, if I know what is particularly from what I shared last time, what is particularly not like this was what I shared last time. Slow my computer. So this is basically um, a Google API client that you would use. And the only thing you need to give is the um, just the, the name that you saved so the in your home directory if you save it or in the dot in if you save your your whatever google gives you when you create the service account it's a json file if you give it here just uh, change the name from i think i shared this one in in tweet uh, in, in github so you have the code um and if you just replace this one, and just you will understand the code. It's just basically you know, where to uh, just it, it searches if it's in your home directory, it searches or in your home directory dot credentials. If you put it there, it will search. Or you will have you can pass also just the, the name directly as F authentication. Um, and then, then that simple, just if you just pass the pass. And then from then, it basically just the Google Sheet, for example, will just you can get a sheet if you know the, the the name of the Google sheet. Like you basically give it in the ID. So I think there is another one. It's called. Um, so when you define, you have to give the sheet ID. And the sheet ID, it's we talked about it. You will find it in your uh, Google sheet. So I'm just gonna um, for now. I'm just gonna stop this because I think just my window, entire window, probably is better. Okay, so so for example, um, do you see my the Google sheet I'm sharing? Yes, yes, we can. Great. So so this is for example, if I want to to get the Google sheet ID is actually this one between. 
if you see this D, like whatever doc spreadsheet D, and then it starts some random number up to the next one. So this is called the Google Sheet ID. So that's the, so if I just select that one, and then if I go, So that's the sheet ID. So that's whenever I want to get that that particular Google Sheet. That's where I do. So last time I I showed you, I demonstrate that. But let me just demonstrate now by by this new um, sheet ID that I just copied. You know, and the the F authentication I created already last time when I showed you. It's kind of um, the some I created some JSON from while. I was getting my my new service account, and then the name now I need to to get is just let's say the week two, okay, or the users for example the users data. So if I want to get or um, so rename I will just get the name, okay. So now the name I want to get, just basically this name is particularly the name of the sheet. So get sheet into DF, the data frame, basically. If you look at the code here, so it's basically just the name is the name of the, the part. In that Google sheet, you, you may have multiple sheets and the name of that sheet. And then basically just because it, it has get everything, just if you don't specify anything, that would be. And then that's basically how you do. Um, oh, I didn't run. Okay. Restart kernel. Okay. Okay, so I just did that. Uh, so if I do that, I basically got, now I will get exactly what you had, okay? So that's what I just showed you. I get the entire data, like the entire, uh, and then if I do just, because that was, uh, I need to transform it. So that's exactly what, what, you, what you got, the weekly plan um, and, um, I didn't prov specify, I could have specified any detail, but I didn't, but that's it. So I get the, the Google Sheet. And if I want to edit anything, so single update. So if I want, let me update, if, I, if my name is there. Um, so let me add my name. Um, or who did something? So if I want to add some others, okay, I will just add my name. You know, it's let me let me exactly define at forty seven at a forty seven. A forty seven is just a column. I want to add my name. Okay, just from from. So what I will do is just basically um, I'm gonna create. Um, so I will just go the code. It's an update, it's an A1, but I'm just gonna exactly do the same. I'm just gonna copy this. And instead of A1, um, so the location is A47. And it's a week two, uh, and um, yeah, set values. So the body part, where is the body part? This may have um, B 
this this I haven't tested, but it it should be it should be body. Okay, so the body is just that. Uh, yeah. Okay, so if I then again run this one, so lock is that, and body is just I'm gonna call it yabbal from Python. Um, it's not location. Where was that? A single update. Change this one. So this is how, now you will see what I do to fix my error. I just see that I got multiple values for argument log, which I don't think so, because the, the location here, the single update is, the location is A1. And unless I made a mistake, so there's log and, oh, yeah. It's, so let me major columns. Huh? Yeah, the major columns. So columns. is there multiple times? No. Um, so let me just take that one out and single update. Now we'll just do this. Yep. Hopefully. Okay, now it's an HTTP error which says invalid JSON payload. Okay, so um this probably so the value sheet update body. What is the body? I think I just copied from a very bigger other code, so that's why. Um, where is my do I define the So I'm just gonna give it um, probably value. But what I will do is that um, I sometimes just would really just go Just definitely the usual way is uh, Google API sale update. Okay, for those of you who probably like there's a tutorial, sorry, just I, I, I just realized I am running. So for the Ethiopian group that I hopefully just you 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 just disconnect from here and go to the other, and I will just finish this one for whoever is here. And that whatever code you will get just uh, with me, just for this one, I will update it in, in, uh, in Git, is, will be just the one that is working. But it's, it's, um, so, but for those of you, just the Ethiopian who have another tutorial, uh, you can just go, just don't. And anyone also who just got enough, you can just leave, because I think we are over time, okay? Um, so I think usually the, ah, I, I probably have already a reference. Okay, so, so in Python, the, the rows um, that is reading multiple range writing. So in the writing, it's these values. Um, so I, 
just copy that. So the sale values, what I want to give is this one. Um, I don't want additional rows, so, and then I will just give body. That's yeah. So one cell is updated, and if I go to th this one, you see it, okay. And that's how you would do. And if you want to update multiple rows, basically you just go again. I mean, I will give you a few methods that you can actually update multiple. Um, so. Earlier, as I just said, if I let me try, it. I'm not sure if it will work or not, but let me try. Is hello, hello? yes, um, I want to ask if the different interviews are in this meeting. So, I already told them to leave, okay? So, okay. Some hopefully, of, some, of, some of them are still in, okay? So, that's what I, I, I just uh, where is my name? Okay, so I think definitely, please just go to the tutorial. This is just we're done, and I think the code will share. Just I will just share it uh, with everyone, and I will add some methods. So I think maybe just a good thing is I will just stop here, and if anyone, okay, so yeah. So is there any other question? I will I will answer that over the Slack. So and if any, probably I will just arrange tomorrow another uh, another uh, tutorial where I will go through just the definition of the. Um, um uh, so the definition of like how do you make k, k means clustering on the twitter part but for now i think that's that's that will be good so i think let's stop it here and we'll continue ciao everyone thank you Gabby. thanks thank you